Well, welcome again, all of, all of you watching on uh, Facebook and around the world. Um, we've been teaching the last oh, four or five Sundays about going on beyond the veil, looking beyond what, what we see with our natural eyes. And the only way you're going to do that is through this book. This book has the ability to look into the spirit realm and show us things out there that we can't see with our, natu with our natural eyes. So there is a veil, and the Bible talks about it, it's called the veil of flesh, and what, we got to go beyond that. you got to start, quit looking just at what you see, and by going by things that are not seen, and things that are shown to us through the Word of God. And so we got to go beyond that veil. Let's start out here, let's go over to 2 Kings chapter 6. Today I'm going to be talking about, about what beyond that veil, we're going to talk about spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare, because we know, the Bible tells us, you know, in Ephesians 6, that we don't fight against flesh and blood. So that's the natural world. We have to go beyond that. But I'm going to show you a picture here in, in 2 Kings chapter 6. Now, uh, Eli Elisha, the prophet, was under siege by, by the, uh, the king of Syria because he kept... Uh, uh, given away his plans. God would show him his plans and he'd protect Israel. So the king got upset and he sent a great army after Eli Elisha. And let's start in verse 15. It says, And when the servant of the man of God rose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And the servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, do not fear, oh listen to that, do not fear, do not fear. This is the big thing in this day and age, you can't let yourself get into fear. We got to walk by faith and not by fear, we can't let fear. So the prophet told his servant, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Now, just, just think of the servant. This is a servant he's thinking in the natural, in the natural way. He, all he sees is himself and the prophet. But he looks around the mountain, and there's a great army surrounding them. And what, what is his thought when he thinks about the prophet? You know, he thought the prophet must have lost it. There's more, there's, you know, there's more with us than there are with them. But see, the prophet knew something that the servant didn't. The prophet knew about the spirit realm. And this is what I want you to realize, that we, are, we don't just live in this natural realm. We got to get beyond. If you want all the benefits of the, of the word of God and all the things that Jesus did for us, you got to go into the spirit realm to get them. They're not in this realm. They're beyond this realm. They're beyond the veil. So the, pro the prophet said, there's more with us than there are with them. And then in verse 17, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open the eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Yeah. All around Elisha. Hallelujah. You know the Bible says that... Uh, you know, Elisha was a great prophet. Elijah was a great prophet. John the Baptist was, was, the, was greater than all of them are prophets. But then it says that you are greater than John the Baptist. How, how can that be? That's because you have the Spirit of God living in you. Amen. They had the Spirit of God on them. So if Elisha had an army of, of angels, or chariots of fire around him, guess what you got around you? Amen. Amen. You have, if you are, if you release it by faith, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear God. Yes. This is some, this is a declaration I make every now and then. I just say, Lord, I fear you. I reverence you, Lord. And because of that, there's angels all around me. The angel of the Lord encamps about my house. I have them camped around my house, they're around my car, they're around my family, they're around my church. Everywhere I go, I have chariots of fire following me. That's why I don't fear nothing. Fear not. Why would I fear when I got all these angels ready to do battle on my hand? Because if they did it for Elisha, and you are greater than Elisha, they're going to do it for you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm here to say, my prayer is, Lord, 
open these people's eyes that they may see beyond that veil, that they can see into the realm of the spirit, that they can know that God has angels, God has principalities and powers in the realm of the spirit, able and willing to fight for you. They will do battle for you when you allow them to. You know, there's a, there's a scripture in, in Psalm 103. It says that the angels hearken to the voice of the word of God. Who voices the word of God? We do. We, do. we do. we voice the word of God. Angels go. Angels protect. Angels give you, and we give you charge over us. You put your angels to work by speaking words of faith. Hallelujah. And that's what Elisha was doing. Elisha was speaking and he said, Lord, pray. I pray that his eyes be open and that they see beyond this natural realm. Because if, you get, if you're just stuck in this world, this world, this world is a scary place. I mean, there's sickness, there's disease, there's, there's murder, there's hate and all this. But we don't live in that realm. See, that's the realm of darkness. Where do we live? We live in light. Amen? Amen? And what does light have to do with darkness? Nothing. Nothing at all. When light comes, darkness what? It flees. It goes. It flees. It's gone. So think about that. Think about yourself. Wherever you go into a situation, you're just like this big, uh, you know, thousand watt bulb. You're just walking in and just... Light it up. Here I am. I remember one, year, one time years ago, my brother, uh, there was something going on and, and he must have had a revelation as he walked in a room and he said, never fear, Pastor Ted is here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, th I always remember that because I think that's so cool. He knew who he was in Christ. And see, if you know that, who you are in Christ, you can feel that way. I mean, I've walked into situations where, where it, was, it, you know, it, was, it wasn't good, put it that way, natural. But I know who I am in Christ. And when I know who I am in Christ, I know I bring the glory of God. I bring the power of God into it because Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You are, you are salt. You are, you are the one who are protecting this world. Let's go over in, in uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We got to get beyond this veil of the flesh. We got to quit just looking at what we see with our natural eyes and hear with our natural ears and feel with our natural feelings. We got to look beyond that. We, got, we, we, we don't want to be carnally minded. Romans chapter 8, verse number 5. He says, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Gosh, if everybody could get a hold of that, that if, you're pure, if you are spiritually minded, you're, you are going to have life and peace. Yes. See, it Years ago, I remember Joyce Myers was teaching on grace. And, and she was talking about grace and she said, anytime you ever feel frustrated, you have gotten out of grace. Because now you're trusting in yourself. Because you're looking inside of yourself for the answer. Why don't I feel this? Why don't I do this? Why? You know, it's not about you and I. It's about, it's about trusting in the Lord with all of our heart. So if you're carnally minded, that means fleshly mind. That's all you, you're thinking about, only what you see. I like what God says. God says that he calls things that are not as though they were. Yes. You, may, I mean, you, might have, you might have everything falling apart all around you, but you just say, I got peace like a river. You're calling things that are not as though they were. You begin to call peace into your life. And, it, you know, if you got a doggy at home and you call doggy here, doggy, you expect doggy to come, right? Amen. Well, expect peace to come. Amen. Come on, peace. Come on, joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Glory to God. I got joy. I got joy. I got joy. You know, the other day I was, you know, normally I feel just wonderful. <laughs> That's my normal me. The other day I was feeling, I don't know, a little bit 
I don't know why, like, it was off. It wasn't normal. And I'm thinking, why do I feel like this? I mean, this is not normal. Something's going on. So I just started to praise God. I just started to praise God. I said, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. And I just did this for like five minutes. And you know what? It all left. All that, all that, whatever was trying to come upon me just had to leave. Because I, what I did is I stepped over into the spirit realm and I began to worship God and praise God. I began to get, get spiritually minded. And it says here, if I'm spiritually minded, then I'm going to have life and peace. Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly, right? Amen. More abundantly than what? More abundantly than what? Did you ever think of that? More abundantly than what? Than what the world has. The world has life, but it's really not life. They're, well, they're like walking dead. But we have God in us. Verse 7, it says, Because uh, the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor can it be. So those who are in the flesh cannot please God. The Bible says there's one thing that pleases God. Faith. 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 Without faith, you can't please God. It says right here, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. In other words, you cannot release flesh or faith when you're walking in the flesh. You have to open up, you have to open up and begin to realize you are a spirit being and you, you operate in a, in a spiritual atmosphere. So the life of the spirit is beyond the veil. Over the past few weeks, I talked about salvation. That Jesus said, when you're born, you can't, you can't see the kingdom of God. You don't, if you're watching me now, you don't understand what I'm saying. Maybe you're not born again. Because until you're born again, you can't see this. It doesn't make sense. I mean, we talked about praying in tongues. To the world, it tongues seems like gibberish. It seems like blabbering and you know that's what I hear them say anyway to me it sounds like music I don't know about them but to me it sounds wonderful I love listening to people pray in tongues sing in tongues I mean it's it's wonderful sound I mean I've I've been in a service before with hundreds and hundreds of people and everybody's singing in the spirit man you think you're in heaven I mean everybody's lifting their voice Woo, I guess got Holy Ghost bumps now just thinking of it <laughs> Woo, glory <laughs> hallelujah Thank you, Jesus, you know, because I'm thinking spiritually. So we talked about being, you know, beyond the veil, understanding who the Holy Spirit is. Tongues, and last week I talked about even divine health. See, if you're walking in divine health, what do we have to worry about in this world? Think about all the prayers Jesus prayed. He prayed how the evil one would not touch us. No evil will befall us. No plague will come near our dwelling. Keep them, Father. Protect them. Give your angels charge over them. So why would we fear sickness, and disease, anything else? What, what's the purpose? Why? Amen? Amen? Trust in God. God will take care of you. He hasn't let you die yet. Amen? Amen. He, trust in God. He'll keep you. And if somebody is dying, who's listening to me, trust in God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He'll bring life to you. The Holy Spirit will indwell you and he'll bring life to your mortal body. So the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6.12 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But I, you know, I thought this was interesting. I like to look up words when I study. I look up words in the Bible. So I looked up this word wrestle. In the, you know, looked it up in, in, the, in the Strong's Concordance, looked it up in, in Vines, and, and I found out that this word wrestle actually means vibrate. I go, vibrate? How do they get wrestle and vibrate? How do we fight with the enemy? How do we deal with Satan? With words. What are words? Words are a vibration that comes from your vocal cords. So I thought that was really interesting. I remember over in Matthew chapter 4 when Jesus dealt with Satan. Well, let's go over. Let's go look at Matthew chapter 4. 
I always say these things because I think everybody, you know this, but I can't, you know, maybe you don't know it. Maybe you don't know it out there. So we got to look at this in Matthew 4. But think about that. We wrestle not, you know, against flesh and blood. We're not fighting natural stuff. You're not fighting coronavirus. You're fighting fear. Amen. If you can conquer fear, that virus has nothing to do with you. It can't. It's impossible. Remember my statement years ago, or years, months ago? It is biblically impossible for you to be sick. It's biblically impossible. You say, well, wait a minute, how can that be? Because the Bible says, by his stripes you were healed. It's already done. So if you are healed, how can you be sick? Amen. But pastor, I feel, uh, no, no, no. Don't get in that feeling stuff. Feelings Don't get in the feeling stuff. You got to be, we walk by faith. See, when, when you walk by faith, when you walk by faith, the facts will follow the faith. Amen. The facts follow faith. The fact is, you're healed. The fact is, you're blessed. The fact is, you are a winner and not a loser. That's the fact. And we walk by faith and not by sight. So it is biblically impossible for you to be sick. It, it's biblically impossible. I know, I know you've got to let that rattle around in your brain a little bit. You've got to think that one over. Well, do it until it's so real to you that it has no part in you. Sickness has no part in our lives. It has no right in our lives. No right whatsoever. Because Jesus bore everything on Calvary's tree. In Matthew chapter 4, Verse number three, let's do there. When the tempter came to him, he said, You are the Son of God. Command these stones to become bread. This is after Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And so here came the temptation for him to break the fast, and he wasn't ready yet. And it says, he, Jesus said in verse four, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So as soon as the temptation came, Jesus vibrated. He sent out his word and stopped the enemy. No, Satan didn't go on anymore. So Satan said, whoop, that one ain't going to work. Let's try this one. So the devil took him up into a holy city, verse 5, set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus again began to vibrate. He began to say, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And guess what happened? Satan stopped again. He took step one. Jesus quoted a word. He stopped. He took a step two. Jesus quoted a, the word. He stopped. And then again in verse eight, and the devil took him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus began to vibrate again and spoke these words. Away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and in him only shall you serve. And then the devil left him. Why did the devil leave him? Because the word of God drove him out. Amen. You speak the word of God and the devil has to go. It's not even that, it's not even that he might go. So you've got to settle this fact in you. When you decree something, it's going to happen. When you say it by faith, not, not wishing and hoping. We've got to get beyond wishing and hoping stuff. I mean, you, you, we preach the word of faith. We preach what the Bible says, and what the Bible says is the final answer. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when you settle it in yourself that this is, this is the final answer, and you decree to the devil, that's far enough, no more, that's as far as you go, now get out. Now, you don't even have to wait around to feel. Does it, does it feel like he's gone? I don't care if he feels like he's gone. He's gone. He has to. James says, resist the devil and he must flee. flee. Right. It doesn't say he, he might choose to. 
Or hope, but maybe if you're, if you're hoping a lot, he'll go. No, he must. He has no, there's no, it's, like, it's a law of God that if you resist the devil, he must flee. Amen. He cannot stay. It's impossible for him to stay. But pastor, what if he wants to? He don't have a choice. There is no choice. He does want to. There is no choice. He, can't, he cannot do it. So Jesus used the word to fight and defeat Satan. So we must do the same thing. We must do the word. We must, we must fight uh, not only just by praying, but we have to, the Bible says in James 1.22, don't be a hearer of the word, but be a what? Doer of the word. Say, don't just say, well, I'm a Christian, but then don't show up for the fight. Amen? Amen. You know, we're in a warfare. Do you know that? Yeah. We're in a warfare. We're against, we're, we're warring. There's a battle out there. That's why he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against, or our, our fight is in the spirit realm. The church body is the army of God. We are the army of God in this earth today. We need to come together. You know, this morning, you and, you and I coming together here, worshiping God, coming in unity of the Spirit, we have released spiritual power out into the atmosphere like nothing else can. There is power in unity. Remember what the Bible says? One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight. Just think of what 20 or 30 are doing. Hallelujah. Just think of, you know, I know there's, there's a lot of demons and devils around because there's a lot of angels. The Bible talks about 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. That's a lot of angels. And there are a lot of demons out there. But that, they have nothing over the church. What did Jesus tell Peter? When Peter got the revelation that Jesus was the Son of God, Jesus told Peter, Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That means the church, the body of Christ, is the most powerful thing on this planet at this time. So don't ever take yourself out of the body. See, this is what's going on in the world right now. This is what's happening in America and around the world. Satan has released the spirit of fear that is trying to keep people out of their churches. The church is, will suffer without people. Amen. People say, well, yeah, but I can watch. You know, some of you are watching me on Facebook. Well, I can just watch on Facebook. It ain't the same. Believe me, I'm going to ask everyone here, is it the same if you were watching this on Facebook as it's been here right this morning? No. <laughs> no. I mean, we had, we had a wonderful time of worship. We were worshiping in the spirit. The, God spoke to us through a prophetic utterance in this church. We, all, we are getting built up. You don't get that watching a video. I mean, you can get things out of a video. You can get teaching. But there's nothing like being together with a body of believers. Amen? Amen. I mean, there is. Your, the energy from each of you is, is, is just it's, it's tying all together. And it's lifting us all up. You know, when we, live, when we walk out of this church, we might walk in like this. But when we walk out, we're about this high off the ground. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm ready, hallelujah, ready for what the world got. So we need to come together to worship, to pray. We need to come to get instruction. What do you think God gave the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints? He has, I listened to God, he spoke to me from heaven. You want a word from the Lord? Listen to your pastor preach Sunday morning or Wednesday or whenever. Listen to the men and women of God. They're, they're getting a word from God for the body, for the church. And if you're not here getting your instructions, how are you going to fight your battle? You're going to come up against things in this life that you don't understand. And you're going to miss if you're not, if you're not in your church. You're going to miss, thing, miss out on things. <clears throat> Satan is... is uh, trying to 
deceive the whole world. Actually, the Bible says he does deceive the whole world, but thank God we are not of this world. Amen? Amen. He's not deceiving me. Amen? Amen. He's not deceiving me because I go by what it says in the book, not by what I see around me. The church, the Bible tells us, you know, the church, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Don't forsake. There is power in the church coming together. Let's go look in 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 2. Now we're talking about going beyond the veil in a realm of the spirit. And Satan is trying to separate the church. That's always been his, his mode of operation. He's trying to cut people out of the church. It's the same method that, that uh, animals in the wild, like, like wolf packs, line pack, when they hunt, what they do is they, they go after the body or, or a herd of animals and they try to cut one out. And if they can get that one away, then they can kill it and that's what they end up having for lunch. Don't be the devil's lunch. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Stick with the herd. You know, let, let, let the herd, let the, let the body of Christ be the power. Because there's power being released. Right When you walk out of here today, you're going to be more powerful than when you came in. Amen. You're going stronger. The Bible says the church is growing brighter and brighter until that glorious day. We're getting stronger and stronger. And think about it. The stronger we get, the weaker the devil gets. The weaker the kingdom of darkness is we, as we get stronger and stronger. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if, as if from us, as though the day of Christ has come. You know, there, there's, some people think Jesus has already been here. Well, he was when a baby but he hasn't come back again. Amen? Amen? He's coming back, but he hasn't been here yet. He hasn't showed up on the scene. Listen to verse 3. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The day of the Lord will not come unless the falling of wave comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. So the, there's going to be, in these last days, this falling away. This is a, a Greek word, uh, apostasy, which means falling away, or people falling for, for strange doctrines. There are so many strange doctrines out there. You, I mean, don't even listen to them. You know, I remember years ago, somebody came to me about the book of Enoch. Now, the book of Enoch might be a good book, a lot of good stuff, in, but it's not a part of the Bible. And they said, Pastor, I need to know what's in the book of Enoch. I said, first of all, find out what's in the book of James and John and Peter. Never forget about Enoch until you know the rest of it. Amen. And they were going to build a doctrine. And there is a big doctrine going on about the book of Enoch. There's a big doctrine going on about all kinds of strange things. My Bible says if anybody preaches any other doctrine... But, but the doctrine that Paul preaches, let him be accursed. Amen. And Paul preaches, you must be born again. You must, you, must, you must hear the gospel, you must heed the gospel, you must go by the gospel. So it says that Jesus is not coming until there's going to be a great falling away and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, or the Antichrist. Verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who restrains uh, will do until he is taken away. Now who is the he that's restraining? Who is stopping the Antichrist from coming into this world? The church, the body of Christ. 
We are the ones. Now it says, it says here in verse 7 that uh, the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. He's preparing. He's preparing now to come. He who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. This is why we need the body of Christ. The body of Christ is holding back hell. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. It's the body of Christ. It's you and I. It's your prayers. It's my prayers. It's your faith. My faith. It's your worship. My worship. This is what's holding back all the power of darkness from coming. Once we're out of this world, the Bible talks about something that's going to happen. It's called tribulation. There's going to be great tribulation where, where billions of people are going, to get, are going to get slaughtered. All because we are the ones who are holding back. Verse 8, And then the lawless none will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and to destroy with the brightness of his coming. The church right now, the church as a whole is under attack. It's under attack in America because people in churches, pastors, preachers have fallen to this spirit of fear and they won't let their people worship. They won't let them come into the church. You know, I, I was listening to a minister the other day. He said where the city he was in, he said four churches in his city have locked the front doors of their church because they can no longer operate. And that's just one, one small town that the church is closed down because people weren't coming to church. Because everybody's afraid that there's this unseen monster of a, of a virus that's going to kill them. When 99.9% .9 of everybody who it touches, it doesn't kill them. But why are we fearing? It's that spirit of fear. It's the spirit of fear. The surveys I've read said that 45% of all Christians will never return to their church after this pandemic. 45%. That means the devil has, has um, cut out a lot. But you know, there's a, thing, there's a thing you probably remember Jesus talking about, that when the last days come, that he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. There are things that are going to happen that are going to separate true believers from unbelievers. I mean, there are people who are, you know, Christian in name only. You know, I'm a believer. I believe in Jesus. But Jesus said, why do, you, why do you call me Lord and don't do the things I ask? What does he ask us to do? Pray. Worship. Come together. Fight against darkness. Spiritual warfare. This is what he asks us to do. But people are just not doing it. People have been deceived by the fear and have stopped giving to their churches, stopped supporting their churches, and many churches are closing. I have to say this. I, I thank God. This, this, this has been, for Lighthouse Ministries, this has been the best year in my 26 years as a believer, as a pastor. This has been the best year. How can that be? God's taking care of us. Amen? Amen. God's taking care. We have seen more happen in 2020 than has ever happened before in all the ministry. I mean, we opened up Africa. We're preaching. This message will go to 220 million people by next week. Plus all the other ministries that we're bringing in to go to all these countries. And it's all happened because of Lighthouse Ministries. This has been an awesome year. <clears throat> the church must arise. This is our time. You know, when, when things get tough, that's when we're supposed to get up and say, in the name of Jesus. He's given us that name, the name above every name. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the name above every name. He's a name above sickness. He's a name above disease. His name is above fear. His name is above terror. His name is above every name. So you and I just got to be proclaiming all the time, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on the church. Hallelujah. He's waiting for us to arise. 
show our strength. We, we individually, by coming together, listen, I'm talking, you know, I thank God for all you, all you guys who come here and you are faithful and you've been faithful and that's awesome, but there's thousands of them out there that are in fear of going to their church. Your church needs you. Jesus needs you. Amen. Don't think about, you know, when, a lot of people think when they think of a church, they think, well, that's pastor so-and-so. I ain't nothing. I mean, I ain't no different than you. Amen. It's the church. Remember when, 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 uh, when Paul, who used to be Saul, was persecuting the church, and he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And the Bible says there a great light shone upon him, around him. And uh, Jesus said to Paul, Paul, or Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who is he persecuting? The church. The church is Jesus. Jesus is the church. Jesus is the head. We are the body. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The church. Satan's coming against Satan's coming against Jesus. Do you think he's going to win? Nope. <laughs> he lost already, right? Amen. I mean, we read over in Matthew chapter 4 three different times. He tried to get Jesus each time. Bam, bam, bam. He tried to get him on the cross. Jesus just poured out a little blood. Amen. Beat him with the blood. Hallelujah. So you can't, nobody's going to beat Jesus. Amen. And we are the church. We ought to stand proud. I am a part of the body of Christ. I'm proud to be a Jesus man. I'm proud to be a, a Jesus woman. Hallelujah. Amen. And we have to stand up for what's right because this onslaught of fear and everything you're seeing going on in our nation, and it's not only here, it's around the world, is there to try to stop the church. But Matthew said, the gates of hell shall not prevail. You know, we know, we know, right, because we read the, we read the back. Who, who wins? We win. we win. We win. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the devil's doing. Just tell him, devil, look, we win. Amen. Where, where is Satan's final resting place? Lake of fire. Lake of fire. Ooh. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's, 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 he's his Place. He knows where he's going. He's in panic mode right now because he knows the days are short. There is power in unity. Hallelujah. There is power. I remember a story. I'm not going to go to. You can read it. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. It's about a man who has, uh, had some real perverted stuff going on. And, and uh, Paul got kind of upset about him. There was incest going on in the family. And... Uh, Paul got upset and he told the church, when you come together with the power of Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh that his soul may be saved. But when did the power come? When the church gathered together. See, right now, there is way more power available than if we are individually sitting at home in our homes but when we come together, we bring this corporate anointing, this corporate power, and this power is, is, a, is able to send thousands and thousands to fly. You know, sometimes, just think about that. When we are worshiping this morning, we're praising God. You know, the Bible talks about portals in heaven. God will open up windows of heaven and pour out blessings. You know, these, these things open up. When we worship. When you, when you and I are worshiping, and I can picture right here, right over 930 East Cloverland Avenue when we're worshiping. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. I can just see this beam of light just going up all the way right up through the sky, up into the heavens, and the angels are, are coming, and the angels are, are going, and, and every, every demonic force is being pushed back. They're, they're right now, they're on the outskirts of Ironwood City. They can't come in because our worship has gone up. Amen? Amen. Think about it. This is what really is going on. Don't live in the natural realm. Live in the spiritual realm. Let yourself get caught up in the spirit and see these things by the spirit. That we are sending 
thousands and thousands to flight. There's power in unity. The church needs to arise. The church has, has got to get away from things like, like fear and terror. We just got to get away from it. It just can't be a part of our vocabulary anymore. Amen. We are victorious. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're, the, we're, we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. <clears throat> we are the body of Christ. Nothing Say nothing. nothing. Nothing can prevail against us. We win every time. <laughs> we cannot lose. How can you lose if God be for you? Who can be against you? We can't lose. You're going to go into a fight with somebody, but you got God standing on your side. You can't lose. It's impossible. The Bible says that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. The Bible says you are more than conquerors. That's even above being the winner. More than conquerors. He always causes us to triumph. I'll leave you with this little thing. Don't hide in your basement. Fight. Amen. Amen. Arise. Satan's trying to put you in your basement. He's trying to get you to hide. Don't hide. Stand up. The Apostle Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of, of Christ. It's, it's the power of God unto salvation. It's the power of God. We've got to declare Jesus is Lord. Say that with me. Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Woo, didn't you just, I can feel them devils just shivering out there. Listen what them people are saying. They're saying that name. What name is that? Jesus. Oh man, I could just I could feel them out there. They're shaking. Because they're they know that they can't defeat anything attached to Jesus. Let's do that one more time. I like that. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, thank you, Jesus. I mean, do that in your home when you get up in the morning. Just say, Thank you, Jesus. 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 And know when you're saying that word that every knee is going to bow. Every demon that hears that name. Jesus said, he gave us a commission. He said, in my name, you will cast out devils. It's all in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So don't fear. Don't fear. Body of Christ, rise up. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Use the weapons he's given us. The name of Jesus, the word of God, the blood of Jesus, pray in tongues. Man, I tell you, we're, we're loaded. Amen? Amen? We're loaded. We got power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's just thank God for his wonderful power. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have given me power. You have given me power. Over serpents and scorpions. Over serpents and scorpions. And all the power of the enemy. And all the power of the enemy. And nothing. And nothing. I said nothing. I said nothing. No virus. No virus. No bacteria. No bacteria. No germ. No germ. No sickness. No sickness. Shall, shall have power over me. Shall have power over me. Because I'm washed in the blood. Because I'm washed in the blood. I'm a child of God. Child of God. I have the name of Jesus. I have the name of Jesus. On my lips. On my lips. And I'm ready to loose it. And I'm ready to loose it. Anytime Satan comes at me. Anytime Satan comes at me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll just shout Jesus. 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 Hallelujah.